I'm Kate Shepard, I'm a reporter at Mother Jones Magazine. Right now we are in Gloucester County, Virginia. Gloucester here is, is, is beautiful, I mean it's this, this great peninsula here in, in, in southern Virginia. It sticks right out into the Chesapeake Bay. Air smells salty and nice, and so it's a pretty nice place. It makes you understand why ancestors who came from England decided to settle here you know, 300 years ago. It's a pretty great spot to be. And here we see people who, who are already living a reality of rising seas. A meteor hit about 35 million years ago and the, the land is still sinking because of that while the sea level is rising. And so the total rate of sea level rise here is about twice as fast as it is in the rest of the United States. So they're basically hit on both sides. They're sinking and the sea level is rising. So it's becoming very real for people here. This region is flat as a pancake and there are about 1.6 million people living in it and we're all getting wet at the same time. I'm Skip Stiles and I'm Executive Director of Wetlands Watch. We've been doing a lot of work for the last six years trying to get people ready for sea level rise. We have the highest rate of measured sea level rise on the Atlantic coast here. It's been about a foot and a half over the last hundred years. That rate is accelerating, it's expected to double. And there are literally billions and billions of dollars worth of assets that are no more than four feet above sea level. This is one of the reasons why the Europeans, the OECD, just rated this as in the top 20 in the world in terms of ports at risk from sea level rise. So if you want to see what's going to happen to your east coast city, come here, because we're getting it now. This is America's coastal future here. This is not a place you're going to want to be in, you know, several decades. Uh, you also see a lot of for sale signs around here. You know, a lot of these people live in houses that have been in their family for generations. That's Jackie's sister's house. I'm just going to turn around here. I like it here because it's quiet and peaceful. I like it a lot of noise. Ain't no violence and peace and quiet. It's nice. Three people want to buy my home, I won't sell it. So you owe them 500000 if I won't sell it. The house, kept, my, my father bought it home for the big aisle in the boat, piece by piece, sex. And he bought it over here and put it up. This little piece in the center is a hundred year old. You know, it's folks that have lived here generation after generation. So there's a lot of roots in this uh, community. I think you met some folks today that are watermen, families from when they first settled. They earn their living off the water. They've done it for generation to generation. And that's got a lot to do with how people feel about the shoreline and why they want to stay here. I worked on a water boat 79 my life. Worked all day long, 16 hours into it. We ain't no bob. I got used to it now. I mean, this is what they do and they're still fishing. If, if I were in a conversation in some of these places that we hold meetings and started talking about anthropogenic climate change, people's eyes would glaze over. And that's part of the problem we face is taking a, a complex and science-based issue and turning it into something that's meaningful for normal people. So it is difficult to talk about anthropogenic climate change. It's difficult to talk about climate change in this state frequently. So we tend to stick mostly to sea level rise. <laughs> 